Everglades are drying up and being built on. No. Yes, yes, such a beautiful place. No, eventually there won't be any land anyway. It's really a shame. Oh, it is. It really is. You know what's also a shame? What? When you sit down and your thighs squish out to twice their size. That's a shame. <laughs> I am just so excited about doing this. Mint breeding is such a great idea. You know, I didn't think you'd like it. Why? Well, I know how you feel about animals, and since we're breeding mink for fur, eventually they're going to have to be killed, and I just didn't think you'd go for it. Do they have to be killed? No, Rose. Many women like wearing coats that urinate. <laughs> Who did you see? 
Well, that was a particularly active time for me. I, I was looking quite stunning. You know, I just had my teeth bonded and I was really irresistible. A few people. How many is a few? Two? No, three? Do we hear four? That was more like a 10-day, two-week span. For me, that's a lifetime span. <laughs> Not even. <laughs> Do you realize I'll be 65 years old when this child graduates high school? Try 70. <laughs> I'll be the oldest mother. What I always loved about my children was everybody thought I was their sister. My body will never come back from this one. It barely came back from the last one. <laughs> it's too depressing. I'm going back to bed. She's gonna have a baby. And if it's a boy, she can name it after its father, Rick Joe Bob Dante. <laughs> Lunchtime, Sophia, go take a look. They need an aphrodisiac. An African what? <laughs> an aphrodisiac. It's a substance that makes you feel sexy. Really? Yes. Like what? Like uh, Spanish fly. Spanish flies? Fly, fly rose, one fly. <laughs> oh, come on, Dorothy. I've been to Spain. It's not the cleanest country in the world. <laughs> They've got thousands of flies. Valencia alone. It is not a fly rose. Spanish fly is not a fly? No. What is it? It's a beetle. They call it a fly, but it's really a beetle? Yes. How do they know it's Spanish? Because it wears a little sombrero. <laughs> well, why don't they just call it a beetle? Spanish beetle. Because they call it Spanish fly. Well, then what do they call their fly? I don't care! <laughs> Forget it. I don't care. The lynx can just sit there and we'll lose all our money. I don't care. Just don't mention Spanish fly to me ever again. <laughs> Touchy about these Spanish flies, aren't you? Oh, Blanche, what did the doctor say? 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 Blanche, Blanche, what happened? Blanche, Blanche, she's in there. Really, Colombo? Come on. What did the doctor say? Oh, the worst is the worst thing ever. Oh, no, honey. It, it's not. It's okay. The baby's going to be fine. Sweetheart, you'll have amniocentesis and the baby will be just fine. We'll help you. You won't have to do it alone. The baby will have three oh, mothers. It'll be such fun, honey. We, we can take turns feeding him. We can take turns waking up with him. And I can do the carpools for school because my hours are And I can help him with his homework because I'm a teacher. And then we can <laughs> send him to the University of Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota. Are you crazy, Rose? This kid is going to Harvard. Oh, Dorothy, those Ivy League schools are so snotty with those preppy people. In Minnesota, he'll get a nice mix. Of cattle, maybe. No, this boy goes to Harvard. Well, who says you decide we'll take a vote? Look, nobody is going to vote for Minnesota over Harvard, Rose. Oh, really? <laughs> He's not going anywhere. It's a girl? No, girl, no boy. I'm not pregnant. It's worse. It's it's much worse. Blanche, what is it? My life is over. Oh, Blanche, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for thinking all those bad things about you when I thought you were pregnant. Like what a slut you were for having all those men. Things on your trampled. But now that you're dying, I mean, please forgive me, Blanche. I give you no plea. I am not dying, Rose, but I might as well be. It's menopause. Well, I wish I could die because as far as I'm concerned, this is the end of my life. <laughs>
Did you see him? Total fruitcake. We're talking serial murderer. <laughs> if somebody tries to murder a serial, he should see a psychiatrist. <laughs> for the rest of the afternoon. Ma, <laughs> oh, perfectly normal people see psychiatrists. It's like talking to an old, knowledgeable, good friend. Well, if that was the case, Dorothy, they wouldn't call them psychiatrists. They call them friends. Psychiatrist means psych for psycho. <laughs> it does not. She's right. I'm not staying. No, I'm not crazy, but he's going to think I'm crazy because why else would I be? I'm not staying. I'm leaving. Right. No, she'll take your hands off me. Don't touch me. You cannot leave. No, I'm glad you're going to talk to a perfect stranger who thinks I'm crazy and reveal the entire secrets of my life. I won't do it. I can't. I can't. I won't. I can't. I won't. Move yourself together. For God's sake, you're in a psychiatrist's office. Blanche, <laughs> Oh, my God. You go on, honey. We'll be right here. See him, banana boat time. He's talking to himself. <laughs> he is not. He's wearing dentures and they just keep slipping. Sure, right. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Are you talking to yourself? Of course not. Fram Walker's talking to me. He's my Martian friend who landed a spacecraft in my yard. Dr. Parks can get those makeup. 
Blake's in the mood. He's a wonderful friend. I'm sure he'll solve the problem. Blanche, you're out of bed. This is wonderful. No, it is not wonderful, Dorothy. I was lying in bed eating. And if I don't get up and walk around, I'm going to become as big as a hippo. And life, if I can still call it that, has to go on in one form or the other. So here I am. I'll just spend my remaining years in the company of women. <laughs> Only reason I'm sticking around is to read Daniel Steele's next book. <laughs> Because you're going through the change? God, I hate that expression. What is the big deal, Blanche? It's nothing. Look at it this way. You don't get cramps once a month. You don't go on eating binges once a month. You don't get crazy once a month. You just grow a beard. <laughs> Don't listen to her, Blanche. You grow a beard, Dorothy. Believe me, I woke up one morning, I looked like Arafat. Oh, <laughs> I think you grew a beard. You never grew brains, either. Well, I tell you, menopause was wonderful for me. It meant no more PMS. I never had PMS. Neither did I. But I had a BMW. <laughs> Charlie Boyle. PMS. <laughs> Premenstrual syndrome, Rose. You mean you never got crazy once a month? No. Boy, I did. I would cry, scream, carry on, put on 10 pounds of water, and, boy, well, menopause put an end to that. I loved it. I don't see how you could love it. Because I didn't see it as having anything to do with my sexuality. I am exactly the same person I was. Unfortunate, thank you. Oh, men are so lucky. They never get periods in the first place, so they never have to stop getting them, so they don't have to go through any of them. They blame us for being crazy when we get them and crazy when we don't. I remember the first time I got my period, nobody had told me anything about it. Boy, was I surprised. You mean your mother didn't tell you? My mother was very prim and proper. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> Well, my whole childhood, I kept hearing about the curse. How when I was 13, I was going to get the curse. Oh, I was absolutely terrified. The year of my 13th birthday, I slept with the lights on all year. Oh, I was sure there was a witch behind every wisteria. Didn't go out on Halloween. I was a wreck. But the year went by and no curse. Then the next year went by, no curse. And finally, when I was 15, Mama took me to the doctor because I still didn't have the curse. And he said, Blanche, do you mean to tell me you still don't have your period? And I said, well, of course I have my period, you fool. I'm not a child. I've had my period almost two years. It's the curse I don't have. <laughs> I got it, nobody told me. I didn't get it, nobody told me. I figured this is life and went back to my meatballs. <laughs> and then when I stopped, it just happened. I mean, a few hot flashes and that was it. Oh, I've heard about those hot flashes. They didn't bother me. I live in Florida. Who can tell the difference between a hot flash and a weather front? <laughs> oh, but it's all so depressing. I had a cousin once, didn't get a period for 20 years. Then at 72, she got pregnant. <laughs> Ma, that never happened. Yes, it did. Oh, come on. Then it must be in the Guinness Book of Records. It is, the Sicilian one. <laughs> got the book of records. <laughs> Ma, no 72-year-old woman ever became pregnant. So what, it cheered her up? <laughs> She'll cheer up when she realizes that it makes no difference at all in her life. It is just a concept. It is not based on reality. That will cheer her up. Nothing will cheer me up. It has rained on my parade. Hello. Oh, Dr. Parks, come right in. Who is that? The vet. Uh, Dr. Parks, I don't believe you've met uh, Blanche. Well, no, he has not, because I certainly would remember it if he had. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming. A man as brilliant as you must be terribly busy. To change your life didn't change her life. <laughs> well, it's no mystery. The minks won't breed because they're too old. You're kidding. Isn't he brilliant? Somebody sold you minks that are too old to breed. They're worn out. They're not interested anymore. You mean you can be too old? Rodents can be, not humans. Is that a theory or is that based on personal experience? <laughs> Both. Dr. Parks, there's a lizard out on the lanai that's looking awful peaked lately. I wonder if you'd mind taking a look. Not at all. Oh, just so worried about the poor little thing. I just can't sleep at all. You know, I'm such a lover of animals. <laughs> well, she 
could be in a coma, put a man within five miles, she'd roll over and shave her legs. <laughs> Makes that are too old. Who can you trust? No one. I learned that in Sicily. It works fine in Miami, too. <laughs> well, we wound up spending $678 in the mink business. And what did we make? Make? Yes. A mistake, Rose. A very large, expensive mistake. <laughs> oh, hi. How did it go? Is your lizard still alive? He just loved me. But then, of course, he would. I'm sophisticated, worldly, glamorous. <laughs> But, you know, I don't know. Maybe he's just too down to earth and nice and decent for me. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> well, I had a good time. He's very nice. Uh -huh. But, you know, the best part of it is I think I'm over my menopausal depression. Honey, you just needed the confidence to know that you're still attractive. And Dr. Parks helped do that. Oh, no. well, maybe a little, but... I know that beauty like mine cannot fade overnight, so... <laughs> he didn't really have that much to do with it. It was you girls. Yes, you just let me carry on and be crazy, and you were right there through it all. We live here. <laughs> you were caring and supportive, and I want to thank you for it. I'm really lucky to have friends like you. Oh, the little rats are still here. Yeah, the animal people are coming for them tomorrow. No, they aren't. No, I called. I canceled. What do you mean? We are not giving away Fluffy, Muffy, Buffy, and Joanne. <laughs> They are non-breeding minks who eat their weight in food every day, Joanne. We are not giving them away, Dorothy. I mean, this is their home. They eat their weight in food every day? When I'm depressed, so do I. The rose, they go. No, the minks stay. They serve man, now we serve them. Oh, come on. Well, are you saying that just because they're too old to breed, they're useless? That they're no good for anything anymore? The minks stay. Right. <laughs> a little something to eat. <laughs> oh my god. What? I think they're making what? They're making a stove. Let me see. Let me see. Yep, they are. We're back in business. Oh please. No, they are, Dorothy. They really are. I don't know a thing about animals. Well, they certainly are. <laughs> yeah, but uh, don't count your money yet. Those are the two. Nails. in the drainage areas, and under the baseboard structure, you have Plateria Andropolis. Did you hear that, Rose? The president of Greece lives under our baseboard. <laughs> Plateria Andropolis is a cockroach. Maybe you'll be voted out next election. <laughs> what do you have to do to get rid of him? The next step is to ascertain the condition of your exterior. For this, I need to perform a cursory inspection of your subterranean substructure. You mean crawl under the house? Anybody can make it sound stupid. <laughs> 
himself every day, knowing his life is devoted to killing other living things. Oh, Rose, I don't think a guy who drives around with a fiberglass termite on the roof of his van ponders many deep questions. <laughs> oh, Blanche, what's the matter? Oh, girls, I'm just in ecstasy. My body is tingling all over. You will never guess what just happened. We know what happened. Let us guess what part of the Middle East he's from. <laughs> just won the raffle over at the movie theater. Tickets to the world premiere of Mr. Burt Reynolds' new movie tomorrow night. That's nice. Yes. And passes for me and my two best friends to the private party afterwards to be hosted by none other than Mr. Burt Reynolds himself. I'm tired of being a tonto with a group. I tried to get another ticket and I couldn't. And this time we'll have to draw cards. I missed out on the Vita. Now forget the cards, Ma. I am not about to give up a chance to meet Bert Reynolds. Me neither. And too, Blanche. <laughs> Sophia, Mr. Bert Reynolds is one of our finest living actors. Why, he should have won the Oscar for Deliverance. Not to mention starting over. That Academy's just jealous. I mean, you put Mr. Sir Lawrence Olivier in Cannonball Run, see what he can do. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Sophie, but the answer's no. Fine, break an old lady's heart. If you need me, I'll be out back with the rest of the garbage. <laughs> Don't worry, she'll get over it. And even if she doesn't, who cares? We're going to meet Barbara! <laughs> I always get this reaction when I wear the tight jumpsuit. <laughs> Tell me, what'd you find under the house? Bad news, you got termites. Termites? Oh, no, can you get rid of them? Sure, haven't you heard our company motto? No, what is it? We get rid of termites. <laughs> we'll have to tent the house right away. You have to move out for two days. Well, where will we stay? Well, how about a beautiful hotel over on Miami Beach? Hey, listen, we're already going to meet Mr. Burt Reynolds. Why don't we just make a great big old weekend out of it? We can't afford a hotel over on the beach. I'll find one we can't afford. What do you say, girls? I think it's a terrific uh, idea. Okay. Oh, good. Okay, we can start tomorrow. <laughs> well, I'm off to Miami Beach to find us the perfect hotel for our perfect weekend. Oh, ma, ma, a hotel on the beach. Doesn't that sound like fun? I get to go with you? I don't have to stay here and get gassed with the termites? <laughs> oh, Dorothy, you're such a good daughter. Yeah, she'll get over it. And if she doesn't, who cares? We're going to be... Uh, Ma, you want the bed facing the TV or the one next to the window? I want the bed next to Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Fine, I'll take this one. <coughs> Ma, you all right? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Just a little relapse from the pneumonia I caught. You remember, I ran six miles in the rain and the cold to bring you the cannoli you forgot to put in your lunchbox. <laughs> Ma, please. Don't worry. I'll be all right. You all go schmooze with Bert and his Hollywood buddies. I'll just stay here and hack myself unconscious. <laughs> well, that's being a good sport. <laughs> Dorothy, you think Bert's gonna like the dress? Oh, yeah. That plunging neckline will really show off his chest hair. <laughs> you know, the last time I wore this dress was at the 1972 presidential inauguration. I ended the evening dancing in the arms of the president. And the next morning, I woke up still in his arms. <laughs> Blanche, you and Nixon? Nixon? No, I can't even picture Nixon naked. I think he must look like one of those little dress-up dolls. Just little mounds of plastic to indicate where everything ought to be. No, I was talking about Mr. William Buster Collier. The president of the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, that presidential inauguration. You know, Buster wanted me to be his first lady, but he died two days later. Oh, I'm sorry. He was performing his first official function, breaking a bottle of champagne over the city's new toll booth. But before he could step out of the way, he was run over by ten Shriners on minibikes. <laughs> Who just happened to have the exact change. <laughs> So many of our great leaders have gone that way. There's a story in the paper.
What about the party tonight? Really? You won't believe who's going to be there. Dom DeLuise. Wow! Lonnie Anderson. Wow! Charles Nelson Riley. <laughs> Charles Nelson Riley. Now, who else? John Forsyth. Mr. John Forsyth. Oh, my God. He's just the sexiest man in television. And Burt Reynolds is the sexiest man in the movies. Oh, I cannot believe this. All that manliness in one room, in one crowded room. <laughs> Hot, crowded room. Everybody's steamy bodies all pressed relax, up against each other. Relax, the relax, relax. Relax, you're about to set off the smoke detector. Oh. <laughs> Hello? This is Rose Nyland. What? I'm one of the winners of the publisher's clearinghouse? <laughs> Ed McMahon wants to see me right away? I should leave my Burt Reynolds ticket on the dresser before I go. Mom, get off the phone. Mind your own business. Guess what? I think this is Sophia. <laughs> Six. The room is 50 and the young lady's 100. And make it quick. I'm not running a hotel here. <laughs> Girls, don't you just love our hotel? Oh, it's so much nicer than those big chains. How did you find it, Blanche? Well, it was in our price range and it was near the beach and it had the most men hanging out in the lobby. <laughs> I think we better go. We don't want to keep her waiting. Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. We have a few minutes. Let's just have a quick drink in the oh, bar. Blanche. Come on, come on, come on. Blanche. Come on, it'll be fun. All right, but let's make it quick. A miss. Girls, see that man over there staring at me? He's undressing me with his eyes. Do you want to move to another table? Not yet. He's only half done. <laughs> Excuse me, but I couldn't help but notice you from across the room. Uh, my friends and I would like to uh, buy you ladies a drink. Thank you very much, but we really don't have much time. Oh, this is Carl, and this is John. <laughs> We're all from Kenosha. Yeah. I know a John from Kenosha. <laughs> I'll bet you know a lot of Johns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I guess it must be regional. <laughs> no, really, for the big clothing convention. Oh, well, tell me, is Leda big this year? Oh, it is with Carl. <laughs> yeah. As long as I don't have to pay extra. <laughs> <laughs> Even I don't get that one. <laughs> so, what the, what's your name? Oh, Blanche. And these are my friends Rose and Dorothy. Oh, well, tell me, uh, how long have you girls been working? Oh, well, that's an odd lead-off question, <laughs> But actually, I've been working all about 30 years. Boy, you must really know your business. Miss Dorothy's a very experienced teacher. Everybody who's had her says she's great. Oh, what do you say we get some drinks and go upstairs and have Dorothy teach us the three R's? Reading, writing, and running around the bed? Uh, as enticing as the offer is, we really must pass. Oh, excuse me, man. Hey. Oh, you ladies don't want a party. There are plenty of younger girls who work here that'll take our money. Girls who'll take their money? Do you know what he thinks we are? Waitresses? <laughs> no, Rose. Hookers. God, that must mean everybody here is... Everybody here is under arrest. This is a raid. <gasps> trying to excel at my work in the laundry. I'll fall in with a bad crowd whose leader looks like Ethel Merman. 
and I forced to engineer a daring prison break using my laundry cart. From that time on, I won't know a moment's peace. I'll scar my fingerprints with battery acid, and I'll run from town to town taking jobs that people have who've got bad grades in school. And then one day they'll find me, holed up in a, in a little shack in the Louisiana Bayou, and a sheriff named Bull will call my name out over a megaphone, and when I need to run for it, he'll riddle my body with bullets. Oh, please don't let them take me downtown. I want to live. I want to live. You're not very good in a crisis, are you, Will? Dorothy, what are we going to do? We'll simply have to explain that this is all a terrible mistake. Officer. Now, what can I do for the senior statesman of the group? <laughs> I'll let that pass because you have the upper hand. Uh, officer, my friends and I are totally innocent. I'm innocent too. Me too. We're all innocent. Why aren't you trash? <laughs> Go on, Dorothy. Officer. If I could see you for just a moment, I'm sure that we could settle this matter to your satisfaction. Forget it. I happen to be a married man. All right, all of you downtown, let's go. We're moving now. Officer, you really don't understand. We were on our way to see Mr. Burt Reynolds. Don't you dare drag Burt's good name into this. <laughs> Move, all of you, let's go. Move it. Come on. With as many notches you must have on your garter belts, it was bound to happen. Oh, oh Rose. Rose, honey, are you all right? I was booked. Fingerprints, mug shots. I'm a known criminal. I'll never be able to go back to my hometown again. Oh, honey, nobody back home's ever going to find out about this. Oh, yes, they will. The St. Olaf Courier Dispatch is known for its investigative reporting. <laughs> You're right. That series they did on oat fungus was an uncompromising piece of journalism. Damn! I bet you Bert is greeting his guests right now. I can't believe we're going to miss it. Well, I won't accept it. Oh, excuse me. Um, officer. Oh, a grievous injustice has been perpetrated upon my friends and me. We are totally innocent. We're just... Three helpless females, desperately in need of a big, strong, strapping man like yourself. <laughs> oh, my cute earrings. Flash, Flash, did you really think that you could get us out of here by flirting with that guard? Well, yes, of course, if he'd been a man. Oh, sure, it's always a man with you, isn't it, Blanche? Men and sex, sex and men. Hey, there's nothing wrong with being career-oriented. <laughs> It's your overactive sex drive that got us into this mess. Who picks a hotel because of all the men in the lobby? <laughs> Will you just get off my back, Nylon? Do you think I'm happy about being arrested? Do you think I'm happy about missing Mr. Burt Reynolds? Do you think I'm happy about being locked up here with all this common gutter trash? What did you just say? <laughs> I'm cute earrings. Nobody calls me names. Come on, let's go. I'll let you have the first punch. Punch? Heavens. Fine. 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 You got that out right now. You're going to get us all in trouble. And I'm going to tear you apart. Listen, you punk. You want to fight with someone, you're going to have to fight with me. But I warn you, I did time in Attica. Attica's a men's prison. I know. I was there a year before they found out. <laughs> Sorry, Chief. I didn't mean to ruffle your feathers. Oh, oh it was magnificent. How did you ever pull that off? I work in the public school system. It's not that different from that. <laughs> I'm sorry I yelled at you. No, I apologize. No, don't you worry about it. I think we're all on edge. This has to be the biggest disappointment of my life. Yes. Yeah, and I've known some real disappointment, too. Believe me. Rose, you're not going to tell us that story about the exploding pig again, are you? I never told you a story about an exploding pig, Dorothy. It was a pig-legged pig. 
Our possum was the one that exploded. Forgive me, Rose. There have been so many possum explosions lately, it's hard to keep track. So what was this great disappointment in your life, Rose? Butter. I wanted to be Butter Queen. Oh, yeah. What an actress. She was so good and gone with the wind. <laughs> I want to be Miss Olivia de Havilland myself. Blanche, are you listening to this? Bits and pieces. Go on. Butter Queen was our town's highest honor. From the time I was born, my folks groomed me for it. Singing lessons, dancing lessons, junior butter pageants. For 16 years, my entire life revolved around butter. You were very fortunate. So many of us wasted our youth. When time came for the pageant, I was incredible. I showed poise in the evening gown competition. I was brilliant in the oral butter quiz. They couldn't even trip me up with a trick margarine question. That evening, butter was spelled R-O-S-E. Rose, you're embarrassing yourself. Please don't go. I have to, Dorothy. I've kept these bitter butter memories too long. As the pageant drew to its frenzied finale, there I was, alongside the other two finalists, churning my guts out. And all of a sudden, for no apparent reason, my churn jammed. Yes! And just like that, it was over. I'd lost. It was the biggest disappointment in my life. It was small consolation to find out years later there had been churn tampering involved. Blanche. Rose, Blanche and I are going to the other end of the cell. Don't cross this line. Did I hear you say that you were from St. Olaf? Yes. I'm from St. Gustav. We're neighbors. My name's Meg. I'm Rose. What are you doing here, Meg? I was arrested for being a hooker, just like you. Oh, I'm not a hooker. I, I was arrested by mistake. Oh, that's what I always tell the judge, too. How did you get mixed up in this sort of thing? I don't know. Things were bad at home. I ended up in Miami. It just happened. Nothing could be bad enough at home for you to end up doing what you're doing. I don't need a lecture. Well, Meg, you can't be happy with the way your life is going. I don't want to talk about it. Well, if you ever do want to talk about it, you know, neighbor to neighbor, I'm here. <laughs> oh, thank God you're here. Arrested for prostitution, I can't believe it. <laughs> You were innocent. I know that. I can't believe these dumb cops would think anyone would pay money to sleep with you. <laughs> Sophia, did you come to bail us out? No, Rose. She's dropping off a manicotti with a file in it. Oh, girls, we're going to get to see Mr. Burt Reynolds after all. I thought these beautiful tickets were all going to go to waste. <laughs> so, uh, which one of you isn't going? one who won the tickets. Yeah, well, my mom's the one who's bailing us out. I lost Butter Queen. Haven't I suffered enough? <laughs> we'll, we'll draw straws. No. We'll flip a coin. No. Sophia, we had this all settled. Now try and be understanding. Understanding? I came down here to bail you out and you're still not letting me go? Mom, will you stop complaining and get us out of here? Where are your roommates, Mrs. Petrillo? They're not here. Mom! <laughs> Me, you cheap floozy. Ma, Ma, you would do this to your own flesh and blood. You get over it, Dorothy. And if you don't, who cares? I'm on my way to see my Reynolds. <laughs> takes me by the arm and insists I tell Bert the story. Sophia, I don't want to hear any more about it. Not even the part when Bert and Dom insist that I repeat the story to Lonnie Anderson? That's it? I don't want to hear another word. Oh, Cinderella's back from the ball and her three wicked roommates are jealous. 
We are not jealous, Ma. We are angry. You left us sitting in jail. Hey, I sent over the bail money. You are an hour later. I think that was just about the time I was nibbling a giant shrimp out of Jerry Reed's hand. <laughs> You're making this whole thing up just to rub it in. You have never met these people. Jealousy is a very ugly thing, Dorothy. And so are you in anything backless. <laughs> I've decided that last night was a bigger disappointment than losing Butter Queen. Do you want to know why? No. no. <laughs> Nick, come in. I can't. My taxi's waiting. I just wanted to stop by and say thank you. For what? For convincing me to go back home. I figured I'd give it another try. Oh, that's great. <laughs> what was it I said? Nothing. I just decided I didn't want to be as old as you are and still be in the business. Well, good luck. I've never felt so good. And so cheap in my home. At least something good came out of that horrible night. So otherwise I got the wrong underwear on. <laughs> He's the roommate you told me about? Yeah. Which one's a slut? Oh, yeah. <laughs>